Module 2, the DVSA's on-road test, and the final hurdle between you and getting your license. It all takes about 40 minutes, it costs £75 if you take the test during the week, or £88.50 if you do it at the weekend. You can take the test on your own bike, any bike actually, as long as it matches the power requirements for the license you're taking. So that's 125cc for the A1, 395cc for the A2, and 595cc for the full A license. You won't be allowed to take the test unless you're wearing the right gear. And likewise, if you don't bring your license and certificates for your theory CBT and mod one, you've already failed the test. Before you saddle up, you've first got to complete an eyesight test and then you're asked a number of questions. These are known as the show me, tell me questions. These are things like, show me how you check the engine oil level. And how do you check the condition of your chain? I'll put a link in the description to a list of all the questions and answers you might face. Now, I can't do anything about your ability to ride, but what I can do is give you some tips that help me. Look, there's no way around it, you're being judged. No, not the horse, you, the rider. The examiner assesses you on everything you do, and this starts from the very moment you get on your bike and ends only when you get off here at the very end. Your examiner rides behind you and gives you directions through a headset. They're usually on a motorbike, but sometimes in a car. Either way, just ride as if they're not there. So, no waiting for gaps big enough for the both of you, or stopping early at the lights. Just treat them like a sat on voice. If they lose sight of you, they'll ask you to pull up somewhere safe. Don't worry, they will find you. So at some point, you will be asked to pull your vehicle up where it's safe to do so. You'll probably be asked to do this a few times. Don't panic or read anything into it. They may have been held up or lost sight of you, but as part of the test, they have to assess your ability to do a hill start and to set off at an angle. So when asked, make sure to pick a legal and safe place, of course, but find yourself a good place to stop. Good as in a place with a nice clear view behind you, where you're not behind a vehicle that's wide or tall. Then don't get too close to the car in front of you. Essentially, give yourself as much space and visibility as you can. At some point, your examiner will start the independent ride, which all told lasts for 10 minutes. They'll ask you to follow signposts towards one place or other. They're not judging you on your ability to follow directions. It doesn't actually matter if you miss a sign. It's all about your riding. Here's some of the things they're looking for. In normal conditions, you should be riding in the center of the lane. Then use position one, the left part of the lane, when turning left, and position three, the part over to the right, when turning right. Mirrors, lifesavers. Every time you change speed or direction, check your mirrors and look over your shoulder in the direction where potential danger is likely to be. If you go past a junction with your indicators on, you'll fail the whole test. So, as well as remembering to cancel the indicators after every turn, make sure you don't indicate too early either. Now, when you come to a stop, keep a foot on the rear brake. This signals to any vehicles behind that you're stationary and signals to your examiner that you're in full control of your bike. When you're moving, whatever speed you're doing, you want a two second gap between you and the vehicle in front. And when you're stopped in traffic, stop two bike lengths behind the vehicle in front and position yourself so you've got good visibility of the road ahead. Then it's back to the test centre where you're taken inside, sat down and given the result. Hopefully you've passed and you're offered the choice to either send in your licence to the DVLA yourself or you can get the test centre to arrange for it to be updated on your behalf. As you may need to produce your license in the meantime, or God forbid the DVLA lose it, the burden of evidence is on you, so it's a good idea to take a photograph of both sides of your license just in case. Rider faults. They're basically minor faults, and if you get more than 10, you will fail. Rider faults include positional errors, I like it. Late indicating. 
and in certain circumstances missing an observation. Then you've got serious or dangerous faults of which you only need one to fail. These are failing the eyesight test, not having the correct documentation, failing to cancel a false indication, failing to carry out necessary lifesavers, any action that causes another vehicle to brake, actions that cause another vehicle to swerve, using the wrong lane, failing to stop for pedestrians at a zebra crossing and failing to stop at a red traffic light. The Mod 2 is really all about your road craft, just demonstrate to the instructor that you can ride well. Get into the habit of checking your mirrors, doing your lifesavers and cancelling your indicators after every turn. The road signs will tell you everything else you need to know. Your speed limits, which lane to be in, all the information's there if you look for it. The only other piece of advice I want to give you is keep calm and carry on. It's easy to fall into a trap of getting stressed, losing your focus, then picking up faults. This is me on my test and right about here I thought I'd just failed. You see I'm blocking this lane and potentially causing a vehicle to brake or swerve, which is an instant fail. My examiner told me later that it wasn't a fault, but in this moment the red mist had set in. Now when stress lands, your focus takes off, and when I set off I was in second gear, nearly stalled. The wrong gear cost me one minor fault, but a stall, well, that would have been a straight fail. Listen, I know it's easier said than done, but whatever happens, try to stay calm and focus only on the test ahead of you rather than the test behind you. To be honest, there's only so much a YouTube video can do in terms of helping you for your Mod 2. It's all about your road craft. So the more experience you've got driving or riding on the roads, the easier you'll find it. So good luck with your test. Um, hey, if you like this video or you want to subscribe, if you press like, or subscribe, it would mean a lot. Until next time.